looking at uh, a story based on design thinking and tenets of design thinking and how not to build the wrong set of products. So how to make your cost of failure cheap while you're prototyping, while you are actually creating a whole lot of divergent ideas, understanding the customer pain points better before you actually step into solutioning it and um, ideating more on what actually should be the uh, product feature to be about. So this is a story about uh, how Intuit uh, tried to help uh, the Indian farmer problem uh, using an app called Fussel. Uh, Fussel means crops. Uh, so basically uh, Intuit um, wanted to solve this farmer uh, to seller uh, produce kind of crop and produce kind of a problem. Uh, so they obligate they felt obligated to really solve this problem because farmers would toil day and night and um, get the crops out there and uh, they go to this mandi which is the marketplace and they're not able to uh, get the right price for all of their year's efforts so the guy gets a crop of carrot or uh, beans or rice and he's not able to get it from the uh, agent you know that guy just uh, goes away uh, with uh, he, he, this, that guy pays a paltry sum to the farmer and he takes away the big loot of the produce whereas the guy who's actually toiled in the farms is actually getting uh, lesser value for it so they wanted to solve this was a problem statement that they really wanted to solve uh, and address uh, uh, and make the life of the Indian customer better so they wanted to come up with an idea wherein at least if he could get a 10% increase in his revenue on a minimum uh, so they felt their mission was achieved so for this uh, they started uh, actually experimenting with a lot of ideas and prototyping a lot of stuff so they it said that it's easy to fail on paper than on an actual architecture or an actual product or prototype don't money building the stuff in fact have a divergent set of ideas initially which is what design thinking is all about uh, so you have a divergent set of ideas it's not sure that you will actually strike gold with uh, the idea that succeeds it's just to help you to reduce your cost of failures at a price point that is quite affordable because you're playing around with a lot of ideas and you can pick and choose very early on which one succeeds and which one doesn't uh, so as idea number one they thought that okay let us go ahead with the ebay kind of a model when you got a set of buyers and then you got a set of customers you connect them both on a platform and then um, okay let us do business so here are the farmers here are the guys who wants to buy from the farmers let them uh, let, let us connect them on a platform like an ebay uh, which was a success model in the us uh, like an e-commerce portal uh, but the problem was uh, back here the buyer said that unless we see the produce of the crop and the quality of the crop we are not able to buy it so we can't take decisions on uh, what needs to be so that idea they had to check that idea out saying that that doesn't work then they came up with the idea number two uh, which is only the suppliers that is the farmer side so they said okay well, let us get the information from the farmers as to uh, what is the typical uh, value uh, when i what kind of crops are you growing in the year uh, what is the amount of uh, crops that you would grow and uh, in which month what kind of crops and what rotation job so all of these questionnaires they sent it to the farmers and the farmer said I'm sorry, we don't, uh, I mean, it's, they were quite whimsical and they, they themselves weren't sure about the answers to all these questions. Uh, so getting all the supplier side information from the farmers also did not really work. So idea number two failed on paper. Mind you, it failed on paper, but they didn't still build a product or a prototype or anything like that. And then uh, they came up with an idea number three. They said, okay, let us let the farmers grow whatever they want to grow. And uh, we'll have the buyers uh, who want to buy from these customers and then we'll connect these two guys using an SMS based network uh, saying that here is this list of guys that we have uh, I've got 100 uh, uh, kgs of radish that I've grown or cauliflower that I've grown and then they uh, send it to the potential buyers and the buyers say okay here is the price that we are trying to sell and this is the region where we, we want your uh, thing so they kind of uh, played around with the demand, sub, demand supply uh, uh, figures and they connected these two things. So there were other challenges like the farmers will really iterate and uh, they may not be able to read the SMSs and uh, you know those kind of things. So but they still played around with the idea and uh, the farmer was able to get the SMS uh, 
uh, for, as to which buyer is ready to pay what kind of uh, money uh, to this uh, for this his crop so they were getting multiple options and uh, there was an algorithm which used to decide okay if this guy can get most uh, price if he sells it in east godavari or if he sells it uh, uh, in telangana region or if he sells it up north uh, back in india where they're trying to solve this problem uh, so you know that actually uh, idea clicked and then when they initially came up with that sms based thing so it was just a guy with a toll free number sitting in a room with some four or five uh, handsets and uh, different mobile phones taking all the calls and then on a piece of paper he was trying to connect the buyer and the seller uh, so they didn't build an al there was no algorithm to, to speak of there was no system to speak of imagine the amount of cost of failure is so cheap so you're iterating continuously over a period of time and uh, the traditional innovation cycle is okay you design you uh, build it then you ship it then you test it internally, then you push it to production and then it goes to the customer and by that time there's a lot of cycle and you already built something and if somebody doesn't want it, the product falls flat on its face and really nobody wants to buy that product. Uh, so this is a small story about how design thinking can help you not build the products that nobody wants to buy, instead buy and build a tried and tested way of creating products that people really are investing and they really want the product. So the cost of failure is cheap and uh, it is quite an innovative way. It's not good to ensure that, okay, you'll end up with a record breaking product, but it is to make sure that the odds of failure are less and at a price point that you can really afford. So that's what design thinking brings to the table. And uh, it's quite an important uh, skill, which is uh, uh, looked out for by many companies. Thank you. Thanks. If you like this, please do like, subscribe, and there'll be more such uh, transformational stories. Thanks a lot.